What's going on everyone? It's Kevin Rempel here with the Sledge Hockey Experience. And today we're at South Fletcher Sportsplex in Brampton for the Cruisers Cup Sledge Hockey Tournament. This is one of the two biggest tournaments of the entire year for the sledge hockey community in Canada. It's one of my favorite times because I get to reconnect with everybody. You gotta think about 40 teams together, Russia brought a junior team, which is just kind of showing more people always wanting to invest in the sport and watch it grow. We're just gonna hop in. I got six games on the schedule myself. Catch some footage of my first time playing in over a year. Watch some of the other action, catch up with some of the fine folks. So head inside and uh, hope you enjoy. So we're here, day two of the Cruisers Cup, watching the Hamilton Sledgehammers play. So I had a lot of people ask questions, and once in a while they'd make a comment about, I don't know if my son or my daughter can play sledge hockey because they have too much of a disability. What a lot of people don't know is that in sledge hockey, even if you don't have the ability to push or pull yourself around the ice, you can still play. So here at the game, we have a couple pushers on the ice, and what pushers are in sledge hockey is you'll have an able-bodied stand-up player pushing a sledge player around the ice. And often these players may or may not have use of both their hands. On the Hamilton team here, you've got uh, Jackson and Landon. Jackson, for example, can use both of his hands with his sticks, but he doesn't have the strength to pull himself around the ice. And Landon, you'll notice, only has use of one arm. And some of these players will have the stick taped to their hand just because they don't have the dexterity or the grip strength to hold on. But this allows them to still play. It allows them to be a part of the game, a part of the team, a part of the community. And it's one of the best ways to still get involved. So that's one of the beauties of sledge hockey is that everybody can play. There's a lot of rules to being a pusher. You, you tend to get yelled at by the referee and other coaches a lot. So yeah. but it's just nice being able to put a kid in a situation where he can actually get out there and score a goal and have the opportunity to play because some of them just can't do it themselves, right? So. Yeah. What's one of the most rewarding things about being a pusher on the ice? Um, when they get one of their first goals. It, it actually feels like it's my goal. It's, it's so awesome. Like just, <laughs> no, the rush of just being able to put the kids in the game. It's really cool just, just to see their faces like, achieving like scoring a goal in hockey. So you've been practicing your shit-talking lines? What? So are you practicing all your shit-talking lines? Yeah. <laughs> Last time I was here, you told me I had to learn from you, right? So I'm at Unique Inventions booth right now. Just brought my sled over to get uh, some tune-ups on my own equipment because uh, these guys are just pros with having the tools on hand. But uh, they pointed something out to me about my blades that I actually didn't even really notice and I think would be very valuable for you to hear about as well, which is the profile of your blade and how it starts to wear down over time. So it wasn't until they pointed out to me how the front and the rear side of the blade has really started to like gain an arc, if anything compared to what a brand new sledge hockey blade is like. So I've already loosened mine off here. I'm just gonna take them off because I wanna show you the difference between what these worn out blades look like compared to what a new one does. So this is the blade that I just removed and we got the new blade here. Now, when I look at what else I have here, this is probably the most worn down that I just removed. I've got another set here and these ones aren't too bad and these are brand new at the bottom. So. When you get a brand new blade, it's almost a completely flat profile. There is a bit of an arc, 
But you'll notice the ends of the blades are very much like a U shape. And then as you get more sharpens, the profile of the blade gets narrower because several more millimeters will be cut off and the corners are starting to round a lot more. And what that's gonna do is when you're on the ice, you're gonna tip front to back. You're, you're rocking front to back, front to back. And it's gonna affect both your straight line speed and it's gonna affect your turning. Because if you're leaning back too far, your front end of your nose is coming up and you're not carving the ice as much as you want. So I just wanna show you the difference here. With a brand new blade, these are not too bad. So you can kind of see the corner being lost. But the rest of the blade's pretty good. It's a little bit at the, at the front and the back, not too bad. My next set that's been really worn down, if I line up the top here, like two or three at least solid millimeters being lost with the profile all the way down the blade and on the front and the back. So my blade's getting worn from a ton of sharpens and the corners are starting to round. And then let's take the one that I just took off my sled. Now this one's been like, man, it is like gone. There's like three to four millimeters or so. Say this is the back of your sled. When you're on the ice, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be in your turn and your front of your sled's gonna be coming up like this as you're trying to dig in and your front end of your sled's gonna come up. And when you're skating in the straight line, you're gonna be rocking front to back, front to back all the time. Whereas with the new blade, you wanna just have a little bit front to back, front to back, and then you're getting a lot better straight line speed. And when you turn, your sled's staying level as you make that turn versus doing a big tip. So I didn't realize how drastic that difference makes, but I noticed it on the ice and it came down to blades being sharpened a lot or incorrectly. Who's ever sharpening your blades, if you can ask them to not take so much time to round the corners like you would with a normal hockey skate because you're not rocking heel to toe so much and just focus on with a brand new blade where the bolt holes are, just focus on sharpening that profile, keeping it flat and then just doing a clean pass on the edges, but not shaving it off heavily to keep you in good shape. So. A little bit of a tech tip I've just learned from Unique Invention myself. Hope I'll see you guys too. And that is a wrap for the Cruisers Cup Sledge Hockey Tournament here in 2018. It was phenomenal seeing everybody again, catching up with the people, everybody involved in the community, the sport, the happening, what's going on. And all I can ask is that if you also love sled hockey or you know someone that needs to see and hear about this awesome sport and like to get involved, please share and I look forward to seeing you again next year.